believe I'm pretty much done with the uh, power hammer. I'm real happy how it turned out. Uh, I like that on off switch up there handy. So what I'm doing is, is uh, cutting up the cork into bite sized pieces. I trim off as much of the fat as I can. And I'm just frying up the meat with olive oil. We've got the bone in there. Adds more flavor. And the husband's like the husband likes to munch on that after it's cooked. Great snack. So while the meat's frying. Get the chili paws ready for the sauce. And this is the fun part because you get to make a pretty giant mess. So I'm using. There you go. California chili pods. And for the spicy part. Get the little chilies. So I just take the stem off, tear them in half, and try to get as many seeds out as I can. You're not going to be able to get them all out. The sauce is going to end up being strained anyway, so anything that's left in there will will remove. There's the chili pods. I rinse them off really well and then um, you fill up your bowl hot water to let them rehydrate. Make sure you wash your hands after handling these because it will burn your eyes. So we've got that going. We're going to get the corn husk ready. And right there. I'll show you how I do that. The meat's coming along. A lot of meat. A lot of tamales. All right, the maza. The maza can be touchy, and um, this is probably the only time that I use measurements when making tamales. The directions are actually on the bag. You can use prepared maza. I just buy the stuff from the bag and make it myself. Um, I replace chicken broth with water, and um, I'm making quadruple what the directions are. So I have five cups of maza in here, teaspoon of salt, I'm sorry, eight cups of maza, a teaspoon of salt, and we're going to use five cups of chicken broth. And we'll mix that together and then I add a little bit of shortening and that kind of helps with the uh, maza not sticking in the tamales. So um, here we go. What? You said some, not all. Not 
So you're going to have to get your hands in there at some point and really mix it together good. This is definitely going to need more liquid. Sauce time, everyone. The uh, chili peppers are rehydrated. You can tell they're pretty pliable, not like when we took them out of the bag. So I just ladle chilies into the blender, fill it up. Be doing this in a few batches, probably two batches. And then I fill up the blender with about, I don't know, fill it up halfway with water. A couple of garlic cloves. Some salt. Cumin seed. A couple peppercorns. And some bay leaf. Two or three bay leaves in there. And then we blend it up. all the stuff you don't want in there. All right, I'm back. The um, pork was done, so I went ahead and added the sauce to it. <clears throat> now it's just going to simmer while I'm putting the maza in the corn husk, and then we'll be ready to put our pork mixture in the corn husk and put them in the tamale pot. We've got the tamale pot here. Looks like a great big giant garbage can. Trust me, it's a tamale pot. It's got a, um, I don't know what this is called, but you put the water in the bottom. This helps with the steaming. You don't want the small ones sitting in the water, and then you stack them up in the pot. And um, you steam, so you'll get to see that. And the corn husks are soaking. This makes them more pliable, so that way you can work with them. All right, so after the tamales has soaked a little bit, it doesn't take long at all for them to become pliable. And I love this brand of corn husk. It's um, El Mexicano. Their tamale husks are very clean. There's no corn silk in them. 
All you have to do is give them a quick rinse and put them in the sink to soak. So um, then I just kind of just dry them off a little bit as I'm taking them out of the sink. And then you put the maza in. Now the trick, it's hard learning how to put maza in a corn husk. You can't put it on a table and put the corn husk on or put the maza in. It makes it a lot harder. It's a lot easier to do it in the palm of your hand. And you work with the palm of your hand to spread the maza. Um, I don't like a lot of maza. I don't like it really thick. I want more filling than I do maza. <coughs> I bring it all the way to the edge and to the end of the corn husk. So when you wrap it up with your filling inside, it kind of seals it for you when you fold it up. So I just go along, I try to pick the biggest ones that I have first, and then you can take smaller ones and piece them together to make a big one. And we'll just keep on doing this and I'll stack them up and then we'll Put the filling in and put them in the pot and we're ready to steam them. I just put sauce filling in the middle. In the cage against the local favorite. And then you fold over one side, fold over the other side, and then you fold up the end. And it goes in the tamale pot. I'll show you that in a minute. I'm just going to start stacking some. So I got about 32 tamales in here, and I've got all this space in the middle. I'm going to take some of these corn husks that are left over and just put them in the middle to kind of fill up that space. That'll keep the tamales in place. So they don't go sliding down or falling over while they're steaming. Then I'm going to take corn husks and put them over the top. This also helps with the steaming. Some people use paper towels, or not paper towels, um, hand towels. I don't like doing that because then you stain your hand towels. Alright. 
participants do it. You'll see. They'll pick it up. We're ready. And usually when they pick it up, they have to take it to the right position and run so that the right angle is the right position. All right, there you go. It's on high right now. I'll bring the water up to boil and then turn it down so it steams. Usually it takes about two hours.